fat laser toy you're talking about, Yankee Chick, you can get that at Walmart in the cat section. Oh, cool. All right. I haven't read this um, for a long time, and uh, I think it's very, very appropriate. It's Betty Tales, The True Story of a Brave Bobblehead Cat by Ruth Hartman Berg. And this is a this is a true story of a of a CH cat. So this book is dedicated to all the pets I've lived with who have taught me the value of unconditional love. And to Betty, a little cat with a huge heart, who still brings laughter and teaches lessons about life to everyone she meets. She's still leaving paw prints on my heart. Betty is a disabled cat who has taught our family wonderful lessons. She taught us that disabilities don't define who a person is or what he or she can accomplish. How so very true. I hope you enjoy reading about Betty and her mischievous ways and you learn, as we did, that animals and people with disabilities are able to do amazing things, just like you can. Betty Tales, the true story of a brave bobblehead cat. When we first met Betty, when we first met Betty, our family had two children, a dog, two cats, a ferret, two birds, and a dwarf hamster named Thor the Assassin. <laughs> I came home from work one day to find my 13-year-old daughter, Emily, waiting for me. Mom, she said, wringing her hands. I need to show you something. Okay, I said. I wondered what had made her so nervous. It's out on the patio. I just want to take care of it until we can find it a good home, she said. I followed her into our screened room. Emily pointed. I'm going to put the book over here so you can continue to see the kitties. Hang on a second. So you can re see the kitties while we listen to this cool story. There we go. It's out on the patio. I just want to take care of it until we find it a good home. I followed her into our screen room. Emily pointed and I peered over the side of a laundry basket. In the corner of the basket was a tiny ball of softly meowing black fluff. She was the tiniest kitten I had ever seen. She could fit in the palm of my hand. Her eyes looked confused. She was so weak, her little head bobbed up and down. I was walking home from school, Emily said. The construction workers down the block called me over to show me. They found her in the street. She was really dirty and scared. They couldn't take her home. I brought her home, Mom, to save her. I gave her a bath. I'm going to call her Betty. Look at her beautiful eyes. Emily stopped to see what I would say. When I didn't answer right away, Emily added, We can give her away after she gets bigger. Look at that. <laughs> With the baba. I looked at my little daughter. Her big blue eyes were peeking at me under her blonde hair. She looked from the kitten to me, hopefully. Sighing, I nodded and said, Yes, we'll have to keep her for a little bit. I went inside to call our veterinarian to find out how to take care of a kitten that was so tiny. The vet told us how to feed her. We didn't have the right formula, so we went to the pet store for bottles and formula. The poor little kitten was so hungry she attacked the bottle. We laughed at her as her little paws grabbed it and held on tightly. We've all seen that here before, haven't we? <laughs> As the weeks passed and we took care of her, it grew harder and harder to think of giving her away to another family. We were still determined to find her a good home as soon as she was old enough, though. There was a problem. We were starting to love her. On her first vet visit, Betty seemed to be just like every other kitten. She passed with flying colors. There she is at the vet's office, strutting around. She passed with flying colors. At home, we giggled at her little kitten steps as she wobbled around the house. A few weeks later, we took Betty back for a second visit to the vet. 
The, the doctor watched as Betty wobbled around the table and turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but Betty is a bobblehead cat. What is that? I asked. Well, when a mother cat is sick, it can damage the kitten. Her brain didn't grow as much as it should. It doesn't tell her muscles what to do very well, so she can't use them like most cats. Some bobblehead cats can barely walk. Betty is actually lucky. She won't get better, but she shouldn't get any worse either. She'll always walk with a wobble like that, and she'll never be very big. Betty had been a feral cat. Feral cats are wild cats with no home other than the woods. They live by hunting smaller animals and sometimes, if they are lucky, by the kindness of, of humans. Feral cats don't have regular vet visits and shots to protect them from diseases. Betty's family lived in the woods near our house until construction workers started building there. I felt sad because I realized it would be hard to find a home for her. I turned from the doctor to look at the little black kitten. Mom, we have to keep her now, Emily said. We just have to. Yes, Em, I said slowly. It wouldn't be right to give her away now. Flop. The months passed, and as Betty grew, she surprised us with her determination to do things her way. Here, honey, let me get that for you. Well, we've all heard, we've all seen that before, haven't we? When the kitties want to do it their way. Betty walked oddly, with back, with both back legs stretched out on either side of her skinny little body, to give her some support. And boy, have we seen that, haven't we, folks? She still lost her balance and fell on her side a lot. She always got a look on her face that said, I meant to do that, and then just got up again. We lived in a two-story house. The steps to the second floor were tall and carpeted. At first, we carried Betty up or down the stairs. We wanted her with us wherever we were in the house. It wasn't long, though, before Betty hissed and growled when we picked her up to travel the stairs. She insisted on rolling down. She would thump and bump her way to the first floor, then prance around at the bottom. Her attitude said, see, I knew I could do it. You didn't have to carry me. For the, here. <laughs> For the trip up the stairs, she dug her claws into the carpet. She pulled herself up all two flights. One step at a time. It was painful for us to watch. We wanted to help, but she was insistent and determined to do it her way. And we had to let her. Here's the next page picture. Sweetie and Garbo, our other two cats, like to perch on the dresser or bathroom counter. They peered down at Betty like she was in a zoo. They weren't too happy. Be Betty wanted to play all the time, and they didn't. They looked at me as if, if to ask, how could I let another cat live in our house? Betty made sure they knew she was really the cat in charge. They quickly learned that they could just jump up on things to get away from her and did so often. Betty couldn't jump up to follow them. Every now and then, another cat dared to walk through our yard when Betty was at the window watching birds. Betty's tail poofed out. She jumped up to, flight with, to fight with her legs spread. We heard her hissing all over the house. It was a good thing she couldn't get outside. <laughs> Even though the ceiling fan was high above her, Betty was afraid of it and ducked her head whenever she walked into the room. Because Betty couldn't run like most cats, she hopped and jumped to get to safety under the coffee table. She must have thought the fan was a bird ready to swoop down and snatch her. She was more cautious than most other cats because she knew she couldn't get away quickly. That never stopped her from exploring, though. She was just more careful about it. When I napped on the couch, Betty liked to climb under my legs. She poked her head out of the hole in my favorite blankie to keep an eye on that fan. 
She liked to spy on the other cats, too. When the weather turned cooler, I liked to sit out front on the patio chairs and enjoy our little garden. If I sat still enough, the birds came and played in the bird, ba bird bath close to me. Betty wasn't sure she liked going outside. At first, she clung to my shirt with her claws. She ducked her head under my chin. After a while, Betty realized she was protected in my arms. Once she knew she was safe, she sat across my lap while I scratched her neck behind her ears. Betty watched everything that moved. When a breeze blew the leaves, she never knew where to look first. There were too many things moving. Her little nose would go up in the air to catch scents on the wind. If a blue jay came to the bird bath, Betty froze. She looked like she was planning to leap off my lap and grab that big old bird for dinner. Once, Betty was sitting on top of the chair at the front window watching the bird bath outside. It was full of sparrows splashing around in the bath like a public pool. A red-headed woodpecker perched on the side and watched. He looked like he was a lifeguard protecting all the other birds. Betty's eyes never moved as she stared at all those birds. Her jaw moved up and down as if she had already caught one and was enjoying an afternoon snack. She would never be able to really catch one, but she liked to act like she could. When it was cold, Betty liked to sleep on my bed, but she had strict rules. For example, I wasn't allowed to pick her up and put her on the bed. She had to claw her way up the side of the bed. Once up, she growled and stumbled over to the space I made for her by my knees. I was allowed to pet her once or twice. If I pet her more than that, she growled again and hissed. You know, we always have to do, do it their way, right? If I dared to turn over, sometimes she stayed. Other times, she acted like that was just too much to bear. Growling and complaining, Betty would head for the foot of the bed. I was not allowed to put her on the floor. She insisted on leaping off like a flying superhero. Betty has taught our family a lot about living with a disability. She has taught us that determination, persistence, and independence are very important. She has taught us to speak up for ourselves when we would rather not do something. She has taught us to be proud of what we could do and not to think too hard about the things we couldn't. She has taught us that even though her body doesn't work exactly like a cat's body is supposed to work, her brain and her heart still do. Betty's older now. The doctor was right. She is still a little cat. But Betty is still very much the cat in charge and is still teaching us important lessons. And here's a picture of the real Betty. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. Yeah, these cats, these C CH cats, I think have become a part of all of us. Um, it says on the back, Betty Tales, the true story of a brave bobblehead cat, is a small book about an equally small cat with a big heart. The hero of this story is Betty, the little cat whose attitude says, I can do that. Born with a disability, Betty found a home. Little did they know when they took her in that Betty would teach them about determination, persistence, and acceptance. That is a really good story because you guys and I have all seen this firsthand, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we all know firsthand that these these uh, CH cats. These derecho cats are awesome. Okay, baby cakes is let me let me let me just be